Hey there, happy Wednesday. Thank you for joining me here tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. It's a time where we can relax and craft together for about an hour and I work on a project from beginning to end. Uh, so you guys can be part of the whole process along the way and sew and stitch with me. Uh, so tonight we are continuing on the uh, Triangle Tangle block from the Missouri Star Quilt Co. This is from their block publication. This is uh, Fall vol Volume 1, Issue 5. And I did put a link to it if you guys want to do it with me. Uh, they do have a digital version of their magazine so you can get it instantly. Uh, we are doing this quilt right here. And I wanted to do this quilt. We're kind of doing this project out of the blue. <laughs> uh, but you need to do that every once in a while. We've been working on the Splendid Sampler 2 project and that's such a long, big, daunting project that sometimes you need to throw in something fun and relatively quick and easy. Uh, so this is a whole pile of half square triangles and we've started to use, uh, started to make them. Um, and uh, we're gonna continue making them tonight. So I showed you guys last night two different ways uh, that we're making half squared triangles here. There are two different ways that we haven't really done here a lot. Um, so that's just kind of a, a, a fun new way of doing it. Uh, and we're gonna do it like the factory sewing way where I do one, uh, one objective at a time and then like we'll sew one seam on all 168 blocks and then we'll sew the other seam and then we'll just keep going uh, one after the other. But if you wanted to see how we did the full uh, process of these half square triangles, uh, be sure to check out uh, yesterday's video. So I wanted to do this project because I got all these adorable fabrics and they needed to be made into something immediately. And by having these large half square triangles, it really shows off the fabric. Um, there's a lot of space here that you can really kind of get gist of the, the fabric. And I thought that was pretty cute. So we're gonna get going. Uh, I'm gonna flip you around and we'll get started here. All right, got my cutting glove. So someone had the great idea last night. Um, you know, we were sewing those long strips together uh, for that one method of making half square triangles. And I was mentioning that I made, uh, just because I, it, it was the first time I was doing it, so I made all my strips a little too big. Um, they actually only need to be the height of this piece here. And I think, um, you know, and we had some extra weird excess because I, I made it too big. So uh, she was like, I should probably cut it down before I do all the rest of them. And, and you know what? That seemed like <laughs> an obvious and great idea that I would have never thought of. So we're going to just quickly, hopefully quickly, we're going to trim all these down. So I know it's more cutting. I thought we were going to get done with cutting, but I'm going to trim them down. Unfortunately, I have... Well, you know what? We can unfold. Let's unfold this mat, make it a little bit bigger. Um, I think it'll make it go faster. So let's shimmy our table out of the way. Uh, this is that folding mat from Ulfa. So it's nice that I can just unfold it and have a little bit bigger area really quickly. So great. Okay. So I need, actually, let's move a couple more things sewing machine can get out of my way a little bit. So I think I'm going to actually have to cut this way. Let's lay these all out. Oh, you know what? I didn't need to cut that way. I need to cut this way. Okay. Because I need to trim a little bit off here. Um, I can't, I can't, Gretchen, I can't sew them first and then cut because I need to I need that sewn seam to be on both sides. So if I sew them first, then cut, I will be cutting off that seam. I could do a bigger seam, um, but then, you know, I would have to cut anyway. And then I would also, um, I'd also, you know, I wouldn't be able to see my seam allowance. I'd have to get a special tool out to make sure that I'm sewing the right seam allowance and everything. So this, this still seemed like 
the way to go. I think how we're gonna do this is I'm just gonna lay these all on top of each other and then I'm not even gonna measure. I'm gonna just take my triangle and I'm gonna mark a few points on here. I, I think that's all we need to do. So let's see, I just wanna make sure these are lined up and square and uh, um, that I'm not cutting through too many. But I think they only had eight. Oh, but that's like 16 layers of fabric. So let's just do four and four and then we'll do um, four and four of the other. Oh, actually we, we used one up already, so it's just seven. All right, so I think this is good. And like I said, I'm just going to, I'm going to just get my water soluble marker. This is, this is how much I don't like measuring uh, in the evening here. So I'm going to just uh, align that ruler and it only needs to be as long as this. So I'm just going to put a mark there and we're going to just go down a little bit further and make a mark here. And that's what we're going to trim off. The end. Oh, no, Gretchen, I only sew together the two. So uh, I did do this last night, um, sewed two of these strips together without cutting this. And I only did those two. So we got, there's eight to do total. So um, I do have a little extra. So this is just shy of five inches is what we're, what we're doing here. Get the glove on. So they will be sewn together, but they're they're not yet. Only those first, only one was sewn together. All right, here we go. Oh, when you, when you, Lucy says, when you did your six and a half inch uh, strips, you cut yours four and seven eighths. That's probably what this is. So it's just shy. Yeah, it's just, it's totally just shy of five inches. So four, four and seven eighths. This is probably exactly on the marker. Yep, four and seven eighths. That's what we're doing. Okay, that's good. So <laughs> four and seven eighths. So that's some of that half square triangle magic math. You know, we're de dealing with triangles. So we got like hypotenuses and all them that get like kind of get our measurements a little goofy. Less, uh, not goofy, just less capable of me doing it in my head. <laughs> All right, that should be what we need. And then we got these little strips. You can use them to tie something up or something. All right, there. These three are ready. Let's just throw them over here. We got three more. Or those are four. Then we got three more here. And then the patterned ones. Uh, but then that's, then that's it. You just use the, the ruler to measure. That, that's probably better than me using my little tool. I think I can do that. I'll, I'll do that next time. So now that you've done the math for me, <laughs> that's going to work great. So there are some like little flaws in this fabric, but I kind of like them. We're just going to leave them all there. Okay, so let's just get that big ruler out. So four and seven a. So now I'm using my ruler. Or so yeah, seven eighths. I'm actually erring on the side of a hair more, I think. All right, just like that. Oh, this is easier to cut through. I forgot I have two more or less layers of fabric here. All right, that's done. Let's do our other color ones. So by doing this, I may be able to get uh, seven, seven squares out of these. Um, I originally thought I was only gonna get five and that's all we needed. We, we only need five, but if we can get seven, then we're gonna have, a, a, you know, like extra half square triangles that we can use use later in like the back or a different project, like a little pillow or a baby quilt. So these are a little longer because um, 
This is 42 inch wide fabric folded in half instead of the um, 36 which uh, with fabric which is the white. This is kind of these are being a little unruly already. I'm gonna do some kitty scratching get it all in place. Ugh. All right, come on, fabric. Eh, the strip isn't lined up. There, do a little kitty scratching. I could all do these all separate, but who wants to do that? All right, that's two. I'd like to be able to get four. And this one already came apart. So let's do the first edge and then the second edge. So this is a little, little more cutting for tonight, but I think this is going to, you know, speed things up and I think we might actually get that extra triangle. So a few extra minutes and we'll be good to go. Okay, I'm gonna try and get this last one on here. And then I have three after this. Okay. Then we will sew. Oh yes, Archie is the new royal baby. All right. Look at those cute little half moon faces. All right, that's done. And three more and we'll be ready. Sun shines. So I got eight different half yards of fabric and that's that's what we're cutting from here which is a little actually a lot different than what the pattern um, asks for the pattern asks for a whole pile of fabric that's pre-cut to the perfect size and they didn't have um, any pre-cuts for this particular these lines of fabric and frankly sometimes with pre-cuts you know I might not want you know it has like the whole collection but sometimes you know, just a few from the collection have a totally different feel together than than the whole collection. So, um, you know, I like the colors that are in this one. I don't I don't want the whole whole collection. I want I want these ones. So we're making it work. All right, that is it. I'm actually gonna even hang up my uh, rotary cutter. I don't, oh wait, no, we are gonna need that to cut these, all our half square triangles. Ah, first we're gonna sew though. All right, fold this guy up again. So here are all my now strips that are correct. Oh, the neighbor's dog is called Archie. Oh, funny. All right, getting my sewing machine. And here is my sew adjustable table here again. Oop, these guys. Okay, here we are. Ready to go. So what I'm gonna do now is move these rulers and uh, 
we're going to do what we did last night. So we are going to, uh, so one of these white ones to one of these colorful ones, and we're actually going to sew both sides. So I'm going to sew all of them, all eight of these on one side, and then I'm going to turn them all around and sew the other side. So we're going to do some, uh, um, some like chain stitching here. I'm just trying to rearrange because I think I'm going to want all this room behind me here. All right, there we go. Let's do it. Um, all right, so let's just grab the first two. And now I also have to unfold them, right? So there we go. So right sides together, but I don't have a, a right or wrong side to the white. And I didn't really press or anything, but I'll press when I'm done. So all I'm doing is lining up the two like that. I could sew the itty bitty strips together. An eighth inch seams would be cute blocks of strips. Oh, that's a great idea, Nolene. I will definitely, um, yeah, do something like that. I, I like that a lot, sewing together. All those strips that we cut off of here, they're about this big, so we would get like this tiny thing that's really small. I think that'd be fun. Oh, Jane, I don't know why it's not working uh, for you tonight. Uh, I do, I, I did get my videos up on YouTube finally, so you should be able to rewatch on, on YouTube. But all right, these guys, we don't need any more. They're finished. All right, here we go. So again, I'm going to do all of them on one side, and then we will uh, flip them around and do them on the other, all eight. So we're starting here. So this might be a bobbin situation, but um, you know, I did not, I did not wind new bobbins yet. I did not do all those things I said I was going to do. I didn't oil the machine. I didn't put a new needle on. I didn't wind bobbins. So <laughs> I think I might be home tomorrow. So maybe all that will happen tomorrow. We'll see. Cause we're going to go through a lot of thread. I think really quickly here. This will be nice though. So we're doing the this version of the half square triangles first, um, just because then we'll get this fabric, fabric out of the way and then we'll do the versions of the half square triangles where we go around the square, like our layer cake basically, our, our 10 inch squares that we did last night. All right, so here's where I'm gonna veer off, but first I'm gonna get Actually, maybe I'll veer off now. Well, no, let's get the next the next layer together. So I'm getting, I'm just grabbing another fabric here, unfolding it. And let's get the a white piece and the right sides together. I'm doing the white on top just because it's, it's shorter fabric. Um, then my colorful one, and then I can see where the end is. All right, that's ready. Oh yeah, sounds like the bobbin's getting low. It's being a little grumpy. Yeah, we kind of found that out last time, didn't we? That when uh, we start hearing like a more of a kerchunk sound, um, it might be the bobbin getting low. I'm not quite feeling that yet but it's so subtle that it might just be in my brain. You, you know what I mean? Like it's something that I feel like I double guess myself on. So I'm just um, lining it up and then sewing that far on like full juice. This is as fast as my machine goes. It doesn't go any faster. I have the pedal all the way down. Oh yeah, I was gonna look to see if I even had more of this color thread. We might be changing colors in the middle of this project, which is fine. I'm okay with that. I like using up stuff.
That's our second one. Oh, look how sweet. We're going to actually come around and do these other ones, remember, too. But I'm going to, like I said, do all eight. Actually, there's seven. We did one last night, so um, that was two. So we're going to just hang out here. This is going to take how long it's going to take. Gosh, I hope we actually start cutting these tonight. I don't know. It's again so funny. I have a hard time estimating how long a project like this lasts because we've been so, I'm just so used to doing those splendid sampler blocks. And uh, those are so small. They're only six, six and a half inch blocks that are really intricate. So in my head, this is way less intricate. It's going to go way faster. The difference is with the Splendid Sampler 2, I'm just making one block and then it's done. Here I'm making 168 blocks. So multiply something easy and quick by 168. It's still going to take a bunch of time. So <laughs> I think I'm underestimating the time that this is actually going to take. But that's okay. This is kind of the fun stuff. This is like... This sort of project, this would be, if you haven't watched any of the Game of Thrones series yet, this is where you start from uh, season one, episode one, get it on your iPad, and just sew all day long, just sew these simple, simple strips, simple cutting, simple sewing, watch some TV. <laughs> All right, almost done with this one. All right, four more to go. You can't decide which you like better, the moons or the suns. I know, aren't they just so sweet, both of them? Ah, gosh, so cute. I have the suns on this dark, this dark blue color too, and I think that's really pretty as well. So they didn't have, this must be a little older collection because they didn't have the whole collection there. Um, I got every part of the collection that they had because it was just adorable. Um, so I bet you there's a bunch of other colors. I think I was going to look that up. Like I was just curious like what other colors were in this collection. Just because I want to know. So I'm curious. Um, I'll have to check that out. I haven't, I might have thrown away all the salvages already. Ah! Oh well. I remember it was um, a Robert Kaufman fabric, so that'll be a good start. Oh, you're, you're happy to be working on a little another project to uh, Gretchen so you can stop doing the red, white, and blue for a little. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the thing too. Like now I'm doing these kind of bright colors again. I like having these breather projects. I know we we talked about that a little last night. But when you're working on a really big project, like, you know, how we are for the Splendid Sampler, it's nice to get a little project like this in just to kind of refresh the system. And then what happens is, you know, I'm always excited to get back on whatever the big project, oh gosh, look, um, that I that I was working on. Like, because you feel just a little refreshed and it's good to go. All right, three more. Ugh, these uh, rainbows are cute. Yeah. 
this muslin um, grabs this other fabric just right. So it's almost like I don't need pins. It just wants to hold on to the other fabric. So that's kind of fun. Oh, we're getting a big stack of these behind the machine. I'll show you guys that in a sec. Once I get the other two done. Yay, Aaliyah, hello. All right, last bit here. Okay. Oh, that's sweet, Lucy. Lucy's doing the uh, um, the teacup on the split and sampler two for Mother's Day. I did not did not do that one yet. Oh gosh, you guys! I was looking when I was at home. I saw my mom's uh, finished uh, entirely, a hundred percent finished. Uh, splendid sampler two, finished and washed even. Splendid sampler two quilt. And I was looking at all her blocks. And it felt like I hadn't done any of them hardly. <laughs> so I have a long way to go on mine. But we'll get it. We'll get her done. And the nice thing is we're doing the quilting as you go. So when we do get it done, like the all the blocks done, the whole quilt will be done at the same time pretty much. So that's gonna be the little magic trick there. All right, one more after this, and then we will rotate them around. I'll get the iron started, iron heating up. Because after we sew the other side, I'm going to iron everything. And then we'll be ready to start uh, trimming. Is the quilt heavy due to the amount of quilting in quilt as you go? Um, you know, my mom's was actually, we were talking about it, we were pretty surprised. So my mom did quilt as you go as well, with a lot of very dense quilting. But she used like a bamboo batting that's nice and drapey and thin and it ended up just being so soft and light feeling. So um, the quilting did not make it feel stiff and heavy at all, even though there is just a ton of quilting, ton of dense quilting. So, so no, uh, that, was a, that was a neat surprise. So I'm using mostly cotton batting um, but it's still pretty drapey and I have a couple pieces of those other little battings in there too just because I didn't have enough batting. I think I, I bought more batting for the, um, Joann's was having a batting sale a while back so I bought a little bit more batting for that baby quilt that I made a few weeks ago. Um, so I should have enough batting with, with that I'm hoping for the rest of my splendid sampler quilt. Oh, <laughs> uh, Adrian says the happy star fabric reminds her of like Hardy's and Carl's, Carl's Ju Jr. Um, stars, which is funny. In Wisconsin, it's Hardy's, but when we, um, when we went to, when we lived in California for a little, they had Carl's Jr. And I'm like, Carl's Jr.? This is Hardee's. <laughs> so I didn't even realize there was a whole nother thing. Okay, I'm gonna throw a leader in here. This is it. And then we'll switch these around. Oh, where's my stiletto? Huh, hiding somewhere. We'll use the scissors. There we go. 
All right, so I'm gonna snip this and we'll flip these around, but here, look at the um, trail of fabric behind me here, all bunched up. So let's see, what would be the best way to flip these? I want to, I want to start at the same size, so from top to bottom, um, just so the fabric's being pulled in the same direction, otherwise it might stretch funny. Um, so I think, well, I guess, I think we'll just put all these on the floor and start at the top again here. Near, 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 near. And uh, what I'm gonna do is just, um, yeah, flip them this way. So we sew them, yeah, I'm gonna flip them like this. All right, so all we gotta do is just keep going. <laughs> all right, get a little up higher so I can see. Snip this guy off. So now he, this is the part where we are sewing the other side as well. So we'll have two sides sewn and then we'll be able to do that crisscrossing of uh, cutting of that triangle like what we did last night. So if this doesn't make any sense, it will once we uh, finished sewing this and um, we'll, we'll try and do at least some cutting tonight. Uh, this and you know, if you watched yesterday's, then this is it's it's the same thing we did yesterday as well. And now it's easier to sew. I don't really have to be lining things up over here because it's already together from the other side. So I'm just kind of smoothing it out as I go. Still like kind of taking breaks, sewing to my hand. Oh, you chose block for your happy trails horsey and it turned out cute. Oh, that's, that's exciting. Yeah, I think felt would probably work just awesome for that. Oh, and remember I have a little less, um, like the white fabric ends right here. So I got to just keep my eye on that. I don't want to sew all the way to the end of my pretty colored fabric. So, all right, let's, I guess, veer off here. All right, flip that up out of the way, and then we'll just start right up on this next piece. I think. Yeah. Gosh, it doesn't even feel like I have two pieces, but I think I'm just used to sewing so many layers of things together. Again, this is just feels different than the Splendid Sampler. that end. I can feel myself running out of that other fabric. All right, right there. Flip that up out of the way. Here are some sunshines. This is our third one, th three out of seven. Oh, I forgot to turn the iron on. Let's do that. All right, well, that's heating up. Yeah, it's gonna feel good getting these big strips out of the way because these are like our biggest, um, biggest pieces of fabric to deal with. After this, it'll be much smaller pieces and that'll be kind of nice. Yeah, it was great to speed. So yeah, I'm I I have the pedal all the way down, and that's it. It is. It's satisfying. <laughs> it, but whenever I do it, it makes me wonder. 
Um, you know, I have a couple other sewing machines and I'm like, dang, I wonder how fast those other sewing machines compare. I do actually even have like, oop, we're getting caught here. Um, I do have a kind of an, an industrial sewing machine um, that I can't really move around as easily as this one. Uh, but this would be, a, I think, a great project for that guy because I think he can just power through things. You know, we haven't we haven't cleaned up our basement since we had uh, that water in. Uh, so uh, um, once we clean it up, I'd like to make a better space for that sewing machine, and I'd like to um, use it a little bit more that industrial one. I'm actually hoping uh, to move our videos to the basement too, so we can use our kitchen table again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just right in, right outside our kitchen here every night. All right. One, three or so more, I think. One, two, I think three. Kind of feel like I'm making noodles <laughs> a little bit here, running a thick thing of noodles through the maker. Because I'm, I'm holding it with my other hand here. It's like I'm holding a long piece of dough. This guy. Oh, sometimes you, um, Joe says, sometimes you make quilt a quilt that's intricate, like this one sampler, but you really enjoy quilts. I can't read the rest, but I'm, I'm guessing you're saying like quilts like this that are just so much easier, so much more kind of mindless, but. Oh, they're relaxing and they just turn out so exciting and fun too. I'm with you. You almost have to, you know? Like, um, you almost have to take a little breather when you're working on something big and intricate. Oh, one more after this. We're almost there. Yay! Okay, we're definitely going to get cutting today, which is awesome. Oop, gosh, I kept sewing and moved all over the place. All right, the last one here. Ugh, I can hear the rain. It is pouring outside. It was raining all day today and just a cold rain. But you guys, I think it deterred people from going to the YMCA today. I had the entire pool to myself. That has never ever happened. There were a couple people at the beginning, but then they all left and it was just me and I had the whole pool. The lifeguard came and talked to me and she's like, I could choose whatever lane I wanted. I could, I could zigzag back and forth through all of them. I almost did, but I thought that'd be just too silly. <laughs> I think I found the prime time to be there too for, for swimming and, and um, because I kind of was there Monday through, um, you know, today at around, like I started swimming around 3.15 ish. And, uh, that's when, uh, you know, people are there at 2.30 to three, but then they're trying to be out by three, it seems. So 
that's been like the golden time for me so far. I gotta find, you know, the perfect time. Oh, Bonnie, I didn't see, when the, when the posts are too long, I can't, can't read them. So um, I'll have to read that. Someone posted that Pat Sloan, that they were looking for a sewing cabinet and got two. I'll have to look at that. Gosh, I was looking, this is so silly. Every once in a while, I'll just go to Facebook Marketplace to the free area, just cause I'm like, yeah, what's free? I wanna just check it out. And there's always like some cool big cabinets, um, just really interesting stuff. And I'm like, dang, if I ever needed like some fabric or like like a place like a good wooden old school cabinet um for stuff i should just look at facebook uh, marketplace look at the free stuff and then just like paint it or something that would just be a way to do it i think oh you know what i was gonna start ironing but we should probably snip these apart right so all right let's uh oh and snip this guy off i'm gonna snip these we'll make a little pile and then i'm gonna press them just because you know, they get a little wobbly. Oh, gosh, it's, they're both over here. The seams are a little, just, you know, it's good to press the seam so you get that little wobble out and and uh, sets the seam. Sets the seam and sets the scene. Sets the scene for the seam. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so we'll, press these seven and then we'll start cutting. I am gonna cut them one at a time though. I'm not gonna layer them just cause I wanna make sure that I'm um, more accurate at this point with the cutting. But we're gonna have real life uh, half square triangles in a moment here. So that's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So we will feel like we've done something tonight yet. All right, that is what I'm hoping. All right, here's our stack. Let's just run the iron over them is, is all I want to do here, really. There, see, it already looks nicer. And I, I didn't iron these at all to begin with. So, you know, they needed to be ironed anyway. I mean, we got that crease in the middle uh, from the fabric and, you know, it's it needed to be ironed. Might as well get that little end too. All right, and I think I'm gonna just throw them over the back of my chair and we'll grab them one at a time uh, when we, when it's time to cut them one at a time. So tomorrow I would like to finish, um, hopefully finish cutting all these half square triangles and then we'll get started on, you know, that the other version of the half square triangles where, where we make them out of the 10 inch squares. Do you like this way of triangles better than drawing lines? I mean, I don't know. We've been making like these sort of triangles so long that I just kind of find them easy where we have two squares and we cut them. But, you know, this would have been so much more cutting to cut all the squares just the right size. I mean, even with the large squares that we cut, we actually get four out of them because we're cutting two diagonally. So, I mean, I like for this project, I mean, you know, it varies per project, but for this project, because um, we need a lot of half square triangles, I think these two methods is they're probably getting us our half square triangles as fast as possible. Um, mostly because there's less cutting, I think, but you know, that could be totally wrong. So far, I'm just kind of liking it because it's a little different than how we usually do it and it's fun to change it up. So not only are we changing up our project, I get to change up the techniques a little bit. So it's just, just fun. And I think maybe that makes it feel faster. I don't know if it really is faster. Although we did do a test. I did do a test one weekend on using the slotted trimmer uh, versus the block lock versus the um, just using my normal ruler for trimming our, our half square triangles. And the, 
the, the slotted trimmers was the fastest. I did a little speed test. But it was only faster by a couple minutes of doing like, I think I did like, I don't know, 50, 50 half square triangles or something. And um, it was only faster by, you know, like six minutes or something. So uh, I think it took me like, I don't know. I should have wrote, written down the stats. I think it was 50 half square triangles. And I think it took like, I don't know, 25 minutes or something. All right, we have two more. So another thing that I'm trying to remember to do, I, I remembered right at the end last night, is that when we, I only need five half square triangles out of this and we got six last night and uh, tonight, I think we might even, because we trimmed them down, I think we might even get seven out of these, which is, you know, two more than I thought. So just so we don't confuse ourselves later uh, when we're sewing our strips to the triangles or to the, to the, these half square triangles, um, I need to take one or two, I need to put them aside, like in a separate stack so we don't accidentally add to it. So I have my one extra here from last night. And, uh, um, you know, if we just get one out of each of these, then I'll, then I'll, it'll go with this one. But if we get two, then I'll have to take two out uh, for each of these. So we'll see how that goes. It's nice having this cordless iron, even though I do, I put it back in the stand, but it's nice not to have a cord flying around that I'm dealing with too. It just makes that faster and a nicer process too. All right, let's cut you guys. Let's come over here. And you know what? I think we'll be cutting for a little while. So I'm gonna rearrange again. Rearrange my tiny little space again. I think I'm gonna just get rid of this guy and my machine I'm gonna put aside again. I just want a little bit bigger area. And since it's gonna take a little while to do this, I don't need my machine. And then all these gobs I don't need either, but those can just kind of stay. So these are our finished blocks. And uh, um, yeah, we'll just set those here. Okay. Let's get a little bit bigger. All right, so this is where we're gonna use our slotted trimmer again. Ooh. Which went somewhere. Okay, slotted trimmer. It's probably in my stack of rulers here. There it is. All right, here we go. And our little extra guy. Okay, so I'm gonna put the white up just so we can see the ending of it again. Yep, the blocks measure six and a half inches. These ones do, Mary. Uh, the pattern for this, uh, I did put a link to it. It's, it's from uh, the block publication from um, the Missouri Star Quilt Co. All right, so I'm putting, I'm using the slotted trimmer again. Uh, I'm, I'm putting the, uh, that, this dotted line, so six and a half inch square, that's what I want. So I'm using this line down here, which happens to be the size of this square, um, this triangle. Um, so six and a half, I'm putting that dotted line on my sewn line. I'm hoping we get a little bit better at this as we go. this guy on tighter. All right, so I'm gonna do this side first. Get that little notch out of it right away too. All right, so this is a little extra piece. And now up this way, line it up again. Uh, 
Okay, there's our first. So we will have we will have this tiny little attached piece now that we didn't have last night because we're doing it the actual size. So I'm gonna get my little seam ripper out and I'm gonna try and carefully, as I go, I'm gonna try and carefully snip these guys. Hey, Ashley. Gosh, I don't even need to do anything there. There we go. So there's one of our half squared triangles. So uh, I'm just gonna make a stack and we're gonna press all these open. So, okay, so the, for the next one, I just rotate. Oh, get the glove back on. Keep the glove on. See, now we don't have that excess on the side like we did last night because we did it actually the right size this time. Get that little end. And it's actually easier to cut too because I only ever have to cut this one side now. All right, two. Shimmy down. So remember, I only need five, so hopefully we can get seven out this time. That'd be cool. Get a couple extras. All right. Oh, I don't think I pulled that one open. I'll have to do that for all these. I'm just going to cut right now. All right. Yeah, this is saving a lot of time from last night because we only have have to make that one cut every single time instead of the two. Oh, you know what? I don't I think I was just aligning to the bottom. I wasn't aligning to the the sewn side. So we're going to have Well, hopefully these are all okay. I'm sure they're fine. All right, I think this is five. One, two, three, four. Yep, so this is five. So this is actually all we really need. Huh, wait a sec. Let's count that again. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so we are still only going to be able to get um, five or six out of here. I wonder why I was thinking I could get a whole nother one. We better count the ones that I did last night again. <laughs> All right, and then one extra. So this is going to be the extra. There, then all this is extra. All right, and now I'm also paranoid. <laughs> so I am going to, um, I'm going to just double check that we have what we need here. So this, these guys we made last night out of the, that square method. So we'll only have four of those, but these ones I should have five, uh, I should have six. So one, two, three, four, five. And then I have my, my one extra one. Okay. So that turned out, I don't know why I thought I'd have so much extra, but you know, we, I mean, we do have extra, but I thought we were going to get a whole not able to do a whole nother one, but, but we don't. So um, we'll still only be able to get six, which is fine. That'll still mean I have an extra. So I'm going to just put these back. Um, so here's the start of my stack. I'm going to just keep cutting. So like I said, today we're like doing this factory style where I just do one bit at a time before uh, moving on to the next step. So let's just grab grab my next um, next guy. And again, I have the white on top just so I can see see where it ends because my white piece is a little shorter. All right, so let's, um, oh, you guys, it is, it's 930 already. Let's do one more. I just want to do one more. And then tomorrow we will continue cutting. Uh, we have seven of these to do. So this will be, 
we'll have five more after after today. So uh, tomorrow we'll get all these done and probably pressed and open and hopefully we'll start sewing um, the square versions too. So making a pile of half square triangles takes a little bit of time. But gosh, I wonder if we'd be able to start sewing strips on uh, strips onto these on Friday. That that seems a little a little much. Maybe not, but gosh, I kind of want to just continue this till we have it done. <laughs> now that we're working on this project, we'll see we'll see where everything goes. We might be able to like maybe next week we work on this too. And who knows, we might be pretty dang far with one extra week on this. So the next step after after these cuttings is I'm I have to unpick that one side of the thread side of the um, seam there. Oh, press a couple open just to see. You want to see one done? All right, we'll we'll cut this one and then we'll we'll press open a couple just for funsies. I'll do it. <laughs> we'll see what one of each of these looks like. How about that? Oh, well, we know what the moon looks like. We we did that one already. So we'll we'll press open one of these uh, little horsies. Because we haven't seen what these horses look like yet. Oop, didn't get that all the way. This is where the fabric gets a little funny, but I kind of like it. There's some flaws in, in this fabric every once in a while. I do think this method is going to make cutting these half square triangles a little faster. And that is fine with me. Anything to make this part go a little faster. I think that was part of a Spice Girl lyric just then. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right, so that piece is done. So this is cruising along now. I feel like we got a little rhythm here. Um, so hopefully that sticks around for tomorrow. Um, we, because we'll probably stop tonight. Uh, so I'm happy that we went back and trimmed those shorter before we before we sewed because it's really making this cutting go faster. So let's um, I'll just hop the this guy over here and we'll press one of these open. All right. So again, I got to kind of pick out the seam. So we'll we'll do that. I don't even really have to pick. They just open. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. Actually, I want to see if I can open one as I press, because then that would save me a step. So let's let's give that a try. So I'm going to press towards. Ooh, I'm going to press towards the the pretty fabric. So I'm going to have that on the top. And this one I haven't separated yet, but let's see if I can just easily separate it. Oh yeah, awesome! So I don't have to go through the whole extra step of separating all those. Good. Save me a step. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, look at these little ponies. They are so cute. The little pink one is eating grass there. Oh my gosh, it is cute. Look at him. Oh, sweetie. All right, <laughs> I love this fabric. Look at what, what this looks like with these little rainbow dudes. So cute. All right, so that's one. Oh my gosh, how are we on time? Now I just want to press all these. <laughs> I think we're gonna just press all these that I have done now, uh, just to just to do it. So I'm gonna make this my extra one. Set it on the extras pile. Let's bring the pressed pile over here. We're gonna just do it. You snookered me. You guys tricked me into doing more. <laughs> um, I I I definitely want to do the granny uh, granny quilt soon. Uh, that may be another 
one that we do while we work on the splendid sampler to quilt along. So I'm, we will pretty much, unless something else weird like this comes up, which I'm thinking it won't, um, I, we won't be doing another quilt um, before starting the, the granny square quilt. So we will definitely be working on that yet. Um, and I think we might kind of pepper in some more projects between these splendid two, um, so splendid sampler two. Oh, I, dang it, I pressed this the wrong direction. Um, I wanted it, I thought it looked kind of funny. Um, pressing it towards the uh, other fabric. So within the splendid sampler two process, we will be working on that granny square quilt. And that one I'm hoping to give you guys a little, a little bit more um, notice. Like this one, I gave no notice because I didn't know I was doing it. Um, this one just kind of popped up. Um, so uh, yeah. So I don't know an exact date for it, but um, I'm hoping to figure that more <laughs> out more. I know I've been kind of we kind of, I've been uh, implying that we would do that one and that, uh, that uh, sketchbook cover for a long time and I just haven't gotten it together yet. So I really do need to focus on that soon. But that's, that's definitely my intention. So in theory, we'll do the sketchbook cover first and then we'll, we'll do the, um, you know, within doing the splendid sampler. So we might do a couple of splendid sampler blocks, then then the sketchbook, and then maybe a couple more splendid sampler blocks, and then start the the uh, granny square quilt, because I just think that's a pretty adorable. That'd be another good one to use up. Um, oh, I think I don't have that link for the granny square quilt in this post here again, but I will, um, I'll post it in tomorrow's, Jane. Um, I believe it's from allpeoplequilt.com. So if you go there and search for granny square quilt, it'll probably pop up. Um, but I do have a direct link. I'll, I'll make sure to put it in tomorrow's post. It's really fun. So I, I read over the instructions though, and I, and it looks like conducive for scraps, but after reading the instructions, I don't really think it is. I think we, you actually need, you know, normal big cuts of fabric, if I remember right, like not even fat quarters. So I'm gonna have to look over that again, because um, it may require getting some fabric. But you know what? I do have lots of yardage of solids. Um, I don't have a lot of yardage of plain, or of like pattern fabric. I have mostly like fat quarters and that sort of thing. Although I do have a lot of penguin and fish fabric like here and there. So maybe, maybe I'll make a penguin and fish fabric granny square quilt. That'd be kind of fun. You know, it's funny. I hardly ever use my own fabric when we, when we um, have these evening bits here, but you know, maybe it's time for a project that I do that I do use it. And you know, I think I just get excited about these other fabrics. So that's why I use, use those. Cause this is kind of my craft time is with you guys, you know? Um, but yeah, I think maybe we'll use some penguin and fish fabric for that granny square quilt. Love we'll to see. Ooh, a granny square quilt with fall colors. That would be adorable. Ooh, I didn't get rid of a dog ear here, but that's okay. I can stay. Like I forgot to cut that little guy off. I know, oh darn, shopping for fabric. <laughs> I think, now that I think of it though, I do think I have some yardage of different things down um, with my stash. So I think I'll be okay. I think I'll be okay without buying fabric. But like I said, it, just at a glance, it looks like, ooh, I can just use a lot of little small uh, squares for this. But that is not actually how the pattern works. After reading the pattern, it is constructed in kind of a fun way, uh, an interesting way that I haven't, done before. So that's kind of, I'm, I'm excited for that. Um, so that'll be kind of neat, but yeah, I do think it requires some like full length, you know, full 42 inch width fabric, if I remember correctly.
Okay, one more. And this one is gonna be our extra, oop, flip it over. This is gonna be our bonus black. Because remember, I need a bonus black in there. I should have I should have eight extra blocks when we're done. If I don't, then I've accidentally added added to the mix. But all right, there are here's our three extras. So we got cute little moon and the little ponies and uh, uh, these guys. And we do have an extra, so we have, um, this will be 15 that we have done. Um, where'd my stack of them go? Did I, oh, this is my stack of them. Okay, and then an extra four because we, we did one example the other way and it happened to be this moon fabric. So we should have five of each of these though. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five, great. So that's that. These will be our bonus ones that I make something else out of, but I gotta take out, take them out as I go. Awesome! So we have uh, five more of these to go, uh, and we will finish that tomorrow. I think no problem. We got really, really um, cutting here really quick with the slotted ruler. So again, this is that clearly perfect, here you can probably see on the white a little bit better, that clearly perfect slotted trimmers. Um, I have to return mine to Amazon yet, um, but I think I'm gonna have to wait till I'm done with this project because I need this Because uh, it comes with two rulers and my other one came broken. So luckily this is the one I needed um, But yeah, I'm, I'm digging it so far and then here are the rest of our strips that we'll do tomorrow So all right, you guys, I'm gonna flip you around. We'll call it an evening here all right, so we made a bunch more uh, half square triangles today. Again, that was fun doing kind of that, just the one, uh, sew the one seam on all eight of them and then sew the other seam on all eight and then trim them all. You know, I, I like, you, you really get in a groove of um, getting a one thing done and uh, it makes things seem fast. Like it does take a long time to do those things, but it does um, feel good to be cranking it out over the whole quilt, so that's exciting. Uh, so we're gonna continue this tomorrow. This is the Triangle Tango quilt. Uh, again, there's a link to the pattern. It's super easy. It's a nice chill project that uh, we're taking a little break from the Splendid Sampler to, to uh, just relax a little. <laughs> and so a nice, big, easy quilt top. Uh, so awesome, you guys. I will get this up on Penguin and Fish Movies on YouTube and it will stay here on the Penguin and Fish page on Facebook as well. And I'll be here again tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. So thanks again. Have a great evening. Good night.